God. This is a special day. We're going to talk about it because it is very special. Amen. Pentecost Sunday. Amen. It was designated this all the way back in the Old Testament, probably like 3,000 years ago, even further than that. As the people of God came out of Egypt, uh, they had their first Pentecost Sunday. Amen. What a privilege it is to be in this house. Amen. God bless you for being here. And we're going to read a couple of scriptures. First in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. says but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth and when he had spoken these things this was Jesus talking while they beheld he was taken up the cloud received him out of their sight while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, I stand you here gazing up into heaven. The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So when he comes back, he's coming back like that. That's what he just... That we just got done hearing. Amen. Put that one back up there again. So as we look at this verse here, <coughs> these are people that are local, men of Galilee. And it's kind of interesting that these two angels, actually they were, standing beside. What are you doing looking up into heaven? It's kind of an interesting question. I mean, Jesus, their Savior, just went up into the clouds. And it's a normal, natural thing to be doing. And they're just wondering what's going to happen next. But uh, he took their attention. They took their attention to the fact that God's got a plan from this point on. And so you're going to go and wait until you be endued with power from on high. And then in Acts chapter 2, starting with the first verse, they have gone to Jerusalem and they're in the upper room and they're praying. And uh, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come... That's a certain day that they had always celebrated, the Passover. But this particular one is the most special one of all. In fact, of all the days in the world, this day is probably the most important day. Yeah, more important than your birthday. More important than even Jesus' birthday. More important than all the deliverances and all of the victories and everything that ever happened. This day is the most important day there ever has been. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues at like as of a fire, and it set on each of them. <clears throat> and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost began to speak with other tongues that's a sign they you're going to find in the book of acts everywhere that people receive the holy ghost they spoke in another tongue and the spirit gave them utterance and uh, and then peter who jesus had given the keys to the kingdom in matthew 16 stood up and began to talk to them about what had happened and people gathered on the outside and they had all kinds of observations. They said they're drunk. If people don't think we're drunk in church, then we haven't really touched God, right? Turn to your neighbor and say, are you drunk? Turn to your neighbor and say, lighten up. 
And that's not with Bud Light either. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, today for the privilege to be here on the day of Pentecost. We ask your blessings and your word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. What would make you happy if you had come into a whole bunch of money today? Would you be happy? It's a happening that probably, you know, you have dreamed about and you would love. And it would be exciting. All of us as humans uh, would need to admit that it would be a happy happening in our lives. Uh, other things could make you happy. Maybe you found the love of your life. Maybe uh, you just bought a new car or a new house or a new dress or something that would make you happy. But happiness is really passing. It's temporal. It's not permanent. Uh, and there's a lot of things that we would like to get in life. But this particular day is the most important day that we have ever known. And a lot of the world doesn't know anything about it. And so we're going to educate you today about the day of Pentecost. If you already know, I, I warn you not to take it for granted. I warn you not to take it lightly. Because this is a very, very important day. So it was a Jewish feast day of the Old Testament when the people of God exited Egypt. And uh, they, they called that the Passover. And they prepared themselves to leave. And then, and then they would celebrate. Celebration in the Bible and in the kingdom of God has always been a big deal. And there's always food at celebration. You notice in some of our announcements there's, there's going to be food. And eating together is, is a lot of fun. It's, a, it's an enjoyment. And uh, it's a time when you feel good because you're putting something in your mouth that's going to taste good and it's going to feel good to you. And so uh, 50 days after the Passover, they had another feast. And it was called the Feast of Pentecost. And basically it's just a simple word. It's in a different language, so it, it has a little mystique to it. But Penta is 50 and cost is feast. So it's the feast of 50 days after the very thing that they're celebrating, and that's when they were delivered. So Pentecost is a feast day. All throughout the Old Testament, the people of God would celebrate again. And there was a lot of celebrations and a lot of happy times that people of God enjoyed together. Uh, and so in this particular setting, uh, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And so this day is the day that God has had in his mind all along this day. And today is, is even more special than just the day of Pentecost. Because yes. while it's the day of Pentecost, it's also the period of time just recently that Israel has become a nation at, uh, for 70 years. They celebrated their 70th birthday of their nation in Israel. And the Bible talks about it in Matthew 24. And it's also a Jewish uh, time of celebration called the year of Jubilee, which is 50 years. And the year of Jubilee in 50 years, all of your, your debts and all of your problems are canceled. You get to start fresh. How many would like to start fresh? Yeah. On, on the news you hear, you know, we'll, pay, we'll help you pay off all your cards and, and, uh, and, you know, and you can start fresh. Consolidate it all into one payment. We'll negotiate all of them down and whatever. And I'm thinking, yeah, and you're going to get your cut too. Because nobody's going to do this for nothing. In fact, if you <coughs> could do it, <coughs> you ought to do it. And, and don't pay somebody to do it. Just, just do it yourself. It's the same with losing weight. You know, we need somebody to help us. We need a trainer. We need somebody to tell us when to eat, what to eat, and what not to eat. And, and if we could just do this ourselves. Well, that's the whole problem is that when sin entered in the picture, there was no such thing as you doing it yourself. The wages of sin is death, and the big problem that God had to deal with is that he loved us. And when sin came into the picture, death came into the picture. And death 
is an absolute. We're not made to deal with death. And death is so tragic. Death is, I mean, we need to understand when we experience it close that this is how the Lord felt when man entered into sin. It's a separation and it's terrible. And you don't have a choice. Some of us have lost our, our spouse or our loved ones. And many times I've stood up here with, with funerals and people's loved ones here. And, and, and it's just, it's an impossible situation. You don't know what to say or what to do. And you feel helpless because it's just over your head. You didn't sign up for it. It's not something you look forward to. You never thought it would be you. And, and death is a terrible thing. And that's what happened when man entered into sin. And God was so hurt and so devastated because sin separates us from God. And yet God loved us. So he wanted to have a plan. A plan of redemption. A plan where we would get it all back together and that we could be in fellowship with him again. And that's really what God wants. And so he started from the very beginning working on this day right here. What happened on the day of Pentecost is what the Lord went to Calvary for. So the wages of sin is death. And since if you give your life for it, then there's nothing left. The Lord had to pay for us to be saved. And he came and, and he went to Calvary and he paid a price so that we could have redemption. And that we would be able to live instead of die. And I thank God for that. How about you? And so, sin separates us. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, God has a plan. And his plan is Pentecost. And I don't know if you've ever heard of a, a program where they have, uh, I guess it's, it's called Undercover Boss. Undercover Boss, you know, some company... Uh, the boss gets the big idea that he's going to just dress up like a normal person and disguise himself. And maybe he's probably the owner. And he comes into the business and as a new employee. And he gets to see everybody, uh, you know, without treating him like you're the owner. And so, you know, the guy, it's a hamburger place. I, I saw one time their hamburger place. And so they have him come in and, and uh, they introduce him. And he gets to meet different people in the business. And, and the next thing you know, he's helping to make the buns or he's helping to do this. And, and, uh, and, and everybody's just treating him like a normal guy. Some people are mean to him. Some people aren't nice. Some people, you know, mistreat him. Other people are very nice and go out of their way and just, you, they get to be candid and be, get to be themselves. Another one was waste management. The guy came in and they took him out in the, on the hillside up here at Rose Hills and at the, at the dump and put him to work. And he's out there picking up trash and sorting out trash and, and he's the owner. And, of course, nobody knows it. So, you know, they're, they're, he, some people treat him nice, some people don't. And then they have a day of reckoning. Everybody comes in and sits down and they see this guy, this new employee that came to work for him. And, and now he's not in disguise and come to find out <laughs> he's the owner. And he reckons with some people and tells them, you know, you weren't very nice. And you're fired. And other people, you know, you're going to get a bonus. And uh, while he was on the job with people, he would hear their problems and their heartaches and their miseries and how they fought to try to survive in life. And so, you know, he one person, he said, I'm going to I'm going to pay off your house because you're a single lady and you're doing all you can. And we're not really paying you enough to survive. And and I mean, it's just a pretty amazing situation to to come to find out you're you're working beside the owner of the company and then you look back and boy you feel ashamed or you feel proud really don't know well that's kind of what it's like when Jesus showed up here on earth he's the he's the God he is the creator of the universe he's the one that's made it all and aside from that he knows you and he loves you and 
he tells stories to help us understand the situation. He said the king sent, you know, a servant to, to minister and, and God sent his prophets and they were killed. And finally he decided to come himself as an undercover boss. And uh, some people mistreated him. Some people missed who he was. And yet the Bible in the Old Testament told about this was going to happen. And, uh, you know, so it could happen on your job. I would just say be a Christian wherever you go because you never know. And uh, you're representing the Lord. <laughs> and the Lord kind of already, I mean, there's nothing new under the sun. So the Lord said you, you could entertain an angel unaware. God sends somebody in your path and, and it's not somebody you expect and it's not somebody you know. You you have to be careful you don't mistreat people who you think are below you. That might just be God. And he told them when you, you fed me and you clothed me and you gave me the drink and, and uh, they said we, we don't remember that. He said when you did this to the least of them my brother and you, you've done it unto me. God is watching it all. And so he came to this world. Some people opposed him. Some people loved him. Some people followed him. And some people were against him. And, and yet the whole plan of God was what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't just when he got here as a baby. That was just the beginning of the plan. It wasn't just when he was 12 years old in the temple. It wasn't just when he was growing up and doing his first miracles. It wasn't just when he was walking on earth. It was all coming down to this day. The whole price that was paid and the whole plan from the beginning was what was going to happen on the day of Pentecost. Because the day of Pentecost is a birthday. And when you were first born, you didn't have much to do with it. Uh, you, you, you don't even remember what part you had to do with it. You actually, you know, coming out into life was probably not a real pleasant situation. But then it gets better because you get to breathe and, and you start to live and you get to move around and, and you're learning and learning and learning and you're starting. You're just, but you know, you, you didn't have a choice about that birth. But Jesus said in John 3, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. You must be born again. So I'm thinking that when we have our birthday tree up here, we need to start people talking about when they were first born and then when they were second born. I was born on July the 25th, 1950. And I was born again in 1959. I was eight years old. And that would be a good date for you to start thinking about in your mind. Because of all the days that matter, your, your first birth you didn't have anything to do with. It just happened to be when you arrived. But this birth on the day of Pentecost, your day of Pentecost, when, when you get the Holy Ghost, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. It wasn't all the things leading up to it. The things leading up to it are you getting ready to have God come into your heart and live there forever. So that's been the plan from the beginning. That's why he died. That's the price he paid. That's the thing that everything was about in the Old Testament is about today, right here, right now. And this is the current literal day of Pentecost on the calendar. So what it means is that it's the day the Lord said you're going to be born again. Yeah. It's the birthday of the church. And right now, today, the Lord wants people to be born again. Yeah. And so I want to talk to you about how to do that. If you haven't been, then you can do that this morning. Now, we are a church that believes in the Holy Ghost and, and how they got it in the Bible. And that happens a lot in our church. In fact, everybody that comes to our church ends up getting the Holy Ghost. Just part of it. It's the plan of God. It's free. You don't earn it. You need it. People are bad. And so some people think, you know, well, they don't deserve the Holy Ghost. That's true. But God gives the Holy Ghost to people that need it. So you can't get good enough. Some people say, well, if I come in your church, it's the, the ceiling's going to fall in because I'm so bad. No, we got a good, strong ceiling. 
God's got a good, strong plan. He's not afraid of sin, and he's going to deal with that. But what you really need to understand is his plan is because he loves you. He loves you. He wants, he wants to be back in fellowship with you. That's what the Holy Ghost is all about. And it's going to be a ticket. I don't know if you understand that usually when tickets are passed out free, you know, people don't think much of it. They don't care what happens to it. They're not worried about it. I got it free. Maybe they'll just give me another one. But this free ticket, you got to watch over. The Bible says a man showed up at the marriage supper, and this is likened unto God's plan in eternity. And he didn't have the, the, the wedding garment on. He didn't have his ticket. And so he asked him, friend, I noticed he, he wasn't mean to him. And he just said, friend, how did you get in here? Because you don't have the garment on. The garment of salvation. And he was speechless, the Bible says. And so this is in, in Matthew. He was speechless. And so the, the, the king, he said, Jesus is telling the story, said, take this man out and bind him and cast him into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's the harshest judgment there is. So you can't sneak in some other way. You can't just say, well, I'm in. You got to get in. And so you must be born again to get in. That's what the day of Pentecost was about. So yeah, it's good that Jesus came. He was born. It's, it's good that he paid the price on Calvary that day. But this is 50 days later. And it's what it was all about. Everything comes down to today. The day of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. The church is God's vehicle to get us to heaven. So this is your birthday. This is the most important eternal birthday. When you get to heaven, you're not going to worry about what was my birthday? When, when were you born? What sign were you born under? And all of that. It's, it, that doesn't even matter. But the day that the Lord came into your heart is something that has a big meaning between you and God. Because that's the day it got back together like Adam and Eve had it in the garden. The Lord wants to walk with you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to be a part of your life. And so the Holy Ghost is just that. The presence of God coming into you. And he's going to be with you and live with you. Best day of, of my life. Before then, sometimes you're afraid. And it's not wrong to be afraid. You can't just live in fear. But I was afraid a lot before I got the Holy Ghost. Because I knew, according to the Bible, you, you got to have it. So I was afraid, and I would pray, God, please don't come till I get the Holy Ghost. But then one day, faith struck in my heart, and I just said, Mom, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost today. Yeah. And I don't even know why I said it on that day. And there was a lot of days I would have liked to got the Holy Ghost. And I was only eight years old, but, but I just felt an urgency to get the Holy Ghost. But somewhere along the line, instead of just feeling fear, instead of just feeling sad or, or even pleading or begging or <clears throat> feeling guilty, I just hit a vein of faith. That comes from God. That's the grace of God. And I hit a vein of faith and I just made the statement, I, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. I mean, you can't just... Think things into existence, can you? Just, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a million dollars. Good for you. Let me know when you get it. But, but you can get the Holy Ghost like that because it's faith when you say it. It's, it's the will of God. It's the plan of God. It's what he paid for. So I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. That's faith. God is moved by faith. So if you want to get the Holy Ghost today, it's the will of God. Now, we don't give it. There's really no pressure on us here today because this has happened to a billion people in the world already. So we're not under any pressure. We don't give it. We don't hold it. We don't decide who gets it or who doesn't. God said it's for everybody. And Peter explained to him in the, in the last days, saith God, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that was already quoted here today. And, and he quoted Joel 2.28 and Isaiah 28.11. And so the Lord said, I want you to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what it's all about. And then you got to take care of it. Five wise and five foolish. 
the oil of the Holy Ghost. Is, is the Holy Ghost is likened into the oil and five foolish didn't have enough oil to make the trip. And that's why they were called foolish. And then he tells the story that here again, they're, they're, they're going out at the last minute and when they come back, the door's closed. So this is serious. What happened today is like, you know what? This is something I got to take care of. We don't want to just take it for granted. We're a Pentecostal church. We've heard this umpteen times. And so, yeah, tell us something new. Don't get caught up into entertainment. Don't be desensitized about the value of this day. This is what it's all about right here today. And I want to celebrate my Holy Ghost every day of my life. It's kind of like when you get a ticket and you just kind of hold it in your hand. I got the ticket to get in. And it's my sealing against the day of redemption, the Bible says. I'm going to check on my ticket a lot of times. I'm getting ready to get in. And I got to make sure I got my ticket. And I want it to be up to date. I don't want to be a foolish virgin. I want to be a wise virgin that's, uh, that's got it all together and that is ready to hear the trumpet sound. And he said, I'm coming after people who are watching and waiting for my coming, who are looking for it and praying. And as, the, as a snare shall it come on the other people, but for the people of God, they're going to know that I'm coming soon. And I got to tell you, several people in this church have come to me recently and said, I've had a dream and the Lord showed me that he's coming very, very soon. This is no time to be doing anything else but making sure you got your ticket in your pocket. But make sure you got your Holy Ghost prayed up and ready to go. Because that's the plan of God. That's what he wants to do. Everybody said amen. amen. So let's have faith. Let's have faith. The Bible says with joy, we're going to draw water out of the wells of salvation. The lady at the well, he said, I'm going to give you water that you've never drank before, that you've never heard of. It's going to be springing up out of your belly shall spring up a, a, a living water. So he likened it unto water. He likened it unto oil. He, with joy, we're going to draw water from the well of salvation. So today you're going to get the Holy Ghost. If you've already got it, you're going to get filled. Because that's the, the term that, that's used in the book of Acts everywhere. And they were full of the Holy Ghost. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. This is not just a little sprinkle. This is not just a little dabble, do you? This is filled with the Holy Ghost. We got to be full of the Holy Ghost. And so we're going to get the Holy Ghost today. And when we do, we will speak in another tongue because that's what the Lord used as a sign. Part of the sign for the tongue is that it's the most unruly member of your body. And so when God takes charge, he takes charge of that and everything else. Amen. And if, if you could bridle the tongue, it says in the book of James, then you can, you can control the whole ship. So we are going to get the Holy Ghost today. And I'm going to help you to get the Holy Ghost just like Brother Plemons does. Brother Plemons doesn't give the Holy Ghost. He just helps us to know what to do. And that's what we're going to do. The Bible said in Acts chapter 2 for us to repent. And so a lot of times people seek the Holy Ghost and seek the Holy Ghost and seek the Holy Ghost. And it becomes a negative uh, experience. I, I seek the Holy Ghost, but I, I can't get it. Well, you got to repent first. If you repent first then it's not hard to get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the will of God. So you can't hurt when you want something that's the will of God. He doesn't play games with it. Some people, you know, hand you something, and as soon as you go to reach for it, they pull it back, and they're just, you know, you know what they're doing? They're enjoying control. Because <laughs> they got you reaching, and now they're pulling it back. Oh. And then, you know... The game goes on. God doesn't do that game. He wants to give you the Holy Ghost worse than you want it. He wants to give you the Holy Ghost and he's not going to play with it. It's, it's, it's for you right now today. So we don't give it, but we can help you get ready for it. So the first thing to do is repent. We're going to do that here in just a minute. And the next thing to do... Either before or after or somewhere, it's an act of obedience, and that is to be baptized in Jesus' name. 
for the remission of your sins. And the baptistry is ready today. If you're here and you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, we can baptize you today. Now, let me explain that just for a minute because there's a lot of baptisms. But the only way in the Bible that they got baptized uh, is in Jesus' name. Matthew 28, he told him to go and, and baptize in the name of the Father. And so you got to fig figure out what is the name of the Father. And in the name of the Son, and you got to figure out what is the Son's name. And in the name of the Holy Ghost, what is the name of the Holy Ghost? These are not separate persons. The, uh, these are manifestations of God. So it turns out that all of those names are one name. Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. And Matthew 1.21, the angel said, You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And, and he said, The Father will send the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, in my name. So the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost are not those three titles, but the name of is the name of Jesus. Everybody in, in Matthew 28 19 that heard that instruction was there on the day of Pentecost when they baptized people in Jesus' name. We can baptize you today in Jesus' name. So you say, well, I was baptized this way or that way, or I was baptized in this church or that church. If you weren't baptized in Jesus' name, you had good intentions. I'm not, not going to knock what you did. But even in the Bible, when people were baptized at Acts 19, they came to disciples and followers. And the first question Paul asked is, how were you baptized? Well, the first question was, how did you get the Holy Ghost? First question. Good question to ask people. You want to be a witness? Ask them, did you, have you received the Holy Ghost? Because that's what Pentecost is about, right? Everybody say the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost? They said, no, we never heard of it. Next question, how were you baptized? They said, we were baptized by John the Baptist. So in Acts 19, verses 1 to 5, the people got rebaptized, even though they had already been baptized. And they were baptized by a good guy. The Bible said John uh, uh, is the best of all the Old Testament prophets. And anybody in the kingdom of God is better than all of that. That's hard to even take into your mind, right? When you're born again, you are greater than John the Baptist and all the prophets of the Old Testament. Why? Because you're a part of the bride. So, baptized in Jesus' name. And we can do that for you here today. And the people in Acts 19 got rebaptized, so we would rebaptize you if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. And then it says, You shall, not might, not maybe, not if God likes you, not if the church votes on you, not if you shake the pastor's hand, not if whatever. None of that matters. You can be poor. You can be rich. You can be whatever. It has nothing to do with it. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the plan of God. That right there is the thing that God has been pointing toward ever since the beginning. You're being born again. So Pentecost is the most important day in your life. And it's going to happen today. It doesn't happen by pleading. It doesn't happen by begging. It doesn't happen, happen by threatening. It happens by understanding that God paid the price for me to have this. It's because I need it and he wants me to have it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for me to have the Holy Ghost. Let's stand right now. What we're going to do is we're going to pr pray a prayer of repentance. If you're here today and you'd like to be baptized, uh, you can tell anybody around you. We'll make arrangements. We have baptismal robes. The water is warm. Hopefully it's not too hot. Complaints lately is that it's pretty warm. Uh, but some people have busted the ice, you know different parts of the country to get baptized because they felt an urgency. I baptized people here in this baptistry at 3 a.m. in the morning. I've had people call me and say, I got to get baptized right now. And uh, I 
test them a little bit and say, well, you know, how about Wednesday night? How about when the whole church is here? How about Sunday? No, I, I got to get baptized right now. And so I come down and baptize them. We don't schedule baptism. It's whenever you're ready. So if you're not ready this morning, we'll baptize you tonight. I'm just saying that right now the water's warm and everything's ready. And the Lord is ready. And it's the plan of God. When I was a kid, I used to think it was really silly that you would repeat a prayer after anybody. I mean, I remember sitting in grade school, you know, six, seven, eight years old, thinking, you know, why would I repeat somebody pray and they say, say this and you say it, and say this and say it. I'm thinking, that's silly. But, but when you think about it, that's all that ever happened. It's better that that happens than you just sit there and listen to somebody else do it because the most important thing is that it comes out of your mouth. It comes out of your mouth. That's what matters. So I want you to repeat this after me if you would, if you would choose to because it's going to be a prayer of repentance and I pray this prayer every day. Yeah, I've been in church all of my life. I've had the Holy Ghost for umpteen years and whatever, but I still ask God to forgive me every day. Why? Because I got to protect my Holy Ghost. I got to make sure that I'm ready to go. If he comes this afternoon, I plan to come to church tonight, but if he comes this afternoon, I want to make sure I'm ready. I'm not going to live in fear, but I'm going to check. And God, give me grace. If there's something that you don't like or something that's not right in my life, he loves you so much that he's going to help you to know. So the Holy Ghost is the biggest, best plan of God there ever has been. So here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every evil thought, every evil word, every evil deed, and of things that I don't even know that are displeasing to you. I ask you to cover me with your blood. I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Let me have the joy of the Holy Ghost in my soul. In Jesus' name. I have never seen anybody get the Holy Ghost being sad. If you want to be sad, you're still in repentance. That's okay. You will get done. You will get finished repenting. You can't get the Holy Ghost repenting. you got to finish it. Get too worried about your being sorry and get to thinking about all that you did. And you start feeling guilty and bad. you got to understand the Lord paid the price on Calvary to wash those sins away. So take joy in knowing that if you just said what I said and you meant it with all of your heart, the Lord said it's gone. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name, it's under the blood. And so now... You start praising God. And we're going to praise God here. Our praise singers are going to help us. And we're, we're going to just sing and worship God. We're not a show. We're not here for you to see somebody. We're here to entertain the presence of God. And everybody here needs to touch God. Everybody here needs to let the Holy Ghost flow through them. Not just, not just to check. but to enjoy the fellowship with the presence of God. Sometimes after church, we're in here singing. Some people that have to leave and go to work or whatever have gone and there's probably half the church or more still here. And you'll see somebody laying on the altar or somebody laying on the floor. You'll see, and there'll be singing going on, and the presence of God is here. And it's happened to me so many times. I don't want to leave. I'm not just checking my Holy Ghost now. I'm walking with the Savior and enjoying His presence and His fellowship. You're going to start that today, and you're going to have it forever. So I'm inviting you to come down now. Let's just, if we need to repent, if we need to talk to God, if you need to receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive it right now. It's the plan of God. We're going to entertain the presence of God. Something special is
Спрячь в зале, 